Hiya. Hi. Welcome to Man of Steel Fan. Give Hope Facebook page on YouTube. So, sorry about the light. Gang, working late. So, I've been asked uh, by people on Facebook page uh, some, some of the comments uh, and what to talk about. And sadly enough, I deleted some of them by mistake. <laughs> uh, uh, and so, I'm just trying to do things from the top of my head. One of the things I read was what's going to make the change from the flash, how can they make the flash different? Um, from the CW in the Justice League well they've already done it you know uh, they've got another cat uh, they've got another actor playing it um, the whole look of the costume his background story uh, looking for friends he doesn't have a team with him as far as I can go by the trailer not all that certain that he's working uh, for forensics, uh, it's a, a totally different spin. Now, Flash, I've I've got a, f a few a few big books on them, and I, I wasn't, you know, it's not my sort of cup of tea. I still like the Flash. There's just that there's so many of them. You know, it's like the Bat family, uh, but with the Flash, you've got so many species. And now on the TV, you've you know, there's more than one Flash. You know, there's Flash and there's Kid Flash, and then there's um, Jesse Quick, uh, and Zoom and everybody else. So it's and then he's got a team behind him helping him out. And you feel maybe after the first season, it's not just about Flash. And some people might have a problem with that. That it's not him solving the crimes himself, or I I just think Flash is a character that, and then some people complain about time traveling, and that it's all about you know the Flashpoint thing. We were all excited about Flashpoint that, that they were going to bring that sort of theme to it, and I quite like what they've done, and the Flash we've got to remember. Uh, you can't do a flash without time traveling, and you can't do time traveling without buggering something up. Uh, and it's all about trying to accept the way things are, and not by going. It's like Back to the Future with Marty McFly. It's all about not going back in time and stuff. And by what I see, and that makes good TV. That makes a good TV show. But coming up with a villain. And something that Flash can take on, it's hard. You know, it's uh, it, it'd be it'd be hard to come up with fresh stories every time. Um, but the fact that there are so many, you know, there all the worlds, uh, all the different universes out there, it makes it that they've got more option, so they can go to Gorilla City, they can go uh, Supergirl and have a musical, they can. Um, they can reinvent every character in that story. They can kill somebody off, go to another world, bring a character back, and then that actor can bring something new, and it it gives that actor uh, something fresh to work with instead of just playing the same character for so many years. I mean, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it, but it keeps it fresh, and that's what's good about it. The movie, um. Flash, uh, as I say, I'm only going by what we've seen in the trailers, and you know he's he's sitting in this sort of uh, a sort of I don't know warehouse, and he's got all his computers up like Bruce Wayne, maybe keeping an eye on certain things and, and keeping an eye on the city, and he's got the costume to the side, so you know it's a kind of mix up between the Green Arrow and. Uh, in the Batman where he's got this hideout, the flash cave or so to speak, and you know, it keeps saying and I don't know why he hasn't got many friends, maybe because you know I don't know. We can only surmise that having these abilities is is basically made him feel like an outsider. 
and now that he's found these people that have got special abilities he can he can be more open and more stuff maybe he was um you know he lost his dad and no he lost his mum his dad's probably in jail so being a young kid we've got him at a young stage maybe before he becomes a cop so maybe this is where he's at just now just trying to get a foothold or maybe as a forensic maybe he does work for the police uh, but he keeps himself to himself who knows but I don't I think the flash in the movie and the TV flash I, I think they were right you know some people got problems with, why can't you not take TV flash and make him into a movie flash and, no, it's you know, the same as why I don't think we should have um, Tom Welling as Superman uh, from the TV show or from Smallville in the movie. Movies for me, you need this sort of presence and you don't want to watch a movie and see a, a young act, you know, and see somebody from the TV show because then you, the movie might start to feel like a TV show because it's the same actor and everything else so it needs to be separate and then again it'll um, because it's a sort of different universe who's to say it'll never ever happen but having it separate just means you can go anywhere in the film you can go anywhere in the tv show because it's you're not contradicting each other and you're having to watch what the other thing is doing so it makes more stories makes more sense and you get to you know, you get two different flashes and you get two different ways to enjoy that character. Um, and as I say, characteristics of the, the Flash and this one, totally different. Um, so, uh, the, one of the other questions, well, I was asked to talk about David Goyer and the DCU, and I, I believe, you know, Say what you want about David Goyer. He's he's done some some good storylines. I mean, Blade, for instance, I thoroughly enjoyed Blade. I mean, I enjoyed all the Blades, but Blade was the like any first movie was you know was fantastic because it was something new. Then what happens? You get follow-ons and stuff like that. And it just goes crazy and and nuts. The same as what happened to Christopher Reeve. You know, the first two were okay. Then it went nuts same happened with Batman and stuff uh, it's, it's fresh ideas it's probably pressure studios getting involved and tell them to make it more why not throw Dracula in with Blade stuff like that um, but in this vision David Goyer and Zack Snyder have have both this sort of uh, you know Christopher Nolan couldn't do Superman so he, he asked Zack Snyder could you come along and you know and uh, do something with Superman? He says I can't do it, but can you? And um, and then David Goyer came on board and stuff. Now that, that I may be wrong, but it, but it was it generated the idea from there. Then Christopher Nolan took a step back and and it was all David Goyer and. Zack Snyder's story of Man of Steel and and Zack Snyder went you know, Chris Nolan might have been there in the background and putting a wee idea here and idea there but it was Zack Snyder's baby and it worked, I believe, again it's one of these films come past um, in a few years time people will go back to it, it'll be on the telly more and People will watch it and say, wow, this was amazing. Why did I not see this? Because Superman has that image since Christopher Lee of being a big boy scout. And then you've got people that were brought up in that that don't want to change it, wants to watch that, but at the same time they'll go and watch these other hero films that are far removed from whatever Christopher Lee's done. It's, it's just a place in your heart, basically, and it's, and it's hard to change. Um... I speak from experience, of course. Uh, and But what they've done, what David Goyer and Christopher Nolan's done, uh, not Christopher Nolan, David Goyer and Zack Snyder has done 
has made a great world roughly cut you know and you could say more more real but not anything to do with the Batman Begins movie I know that was set on a real world but this was this one that Zack Snyder's created along with David Goya is is a world a real sort of world where Superman exists Aquaman exists uh, parademons, aliens, everything and that's got to be hard to do and to still set it into a real sort of world scenario and I, I hats off to him, it would not work in Batman Begins you'd have had to you would ha I can't even imagine imagine uh, you know putting Superman in the Christopher Nolan's movies it just wouldn't sit right by his by the way Christopher Nolan makes his films with the cameras and everything else. I mean, it's down to the little details. But the way Zack Snyder with his cinematography uh, and the way he shoots things with the camera, even the shakiness of the Man of Steel, the way the story unfolds and the way it's shot makes you believe that these characters can exist in this world, that Batman can exist and Wonder Woman can exist. It's just the, the Christopher Nolan was just too sort of... It was too in deception or whatever it is. It was just, I just can't imagine it being there because it was sort of real and and, and that, that's just contributing to David Goyer's writing of the of the story and, and the cinematography that two of them combined can make a world that's believable that these characters exist in and then as I say then we go on to BVS and then we bring in uh, Ben Affleck's Chris Terrio who's won an Oscar and they write this fantastic script and storyline based on I mean Zack Snyder he was the one that came up with the idea of why not bring Batman in? And as soon as that idea hit the floor, that was it. So, and it was their idea that, you know, they shouldn't be friends. Both, one's dark and one's night. Uh, one's, dark and one's, one's dark and one's light. So, of course, they should have some... Um, and to have the story, the, the impact of Metropolis and Zod, that somehow people had problems with, Non-comic book reader, look at the destruction of Metropolis, and but when you really do look at the destruction of Metropolis, it's only a wee area, so it's not that vast. Um, but anyway, but it's dealing with that, and what they've done with Man of Steel and BVS is they've set up the entire universe in one film. They set up the possibility, and you can complain if you want about. It was just a wee video on a computer. But right from the word go, from Lex Luthor mentioning there are more metahumans out there and there are wee bits of nods here and there before you actually seen Aquaman or Wonder Woman or The Flash. You hear Zod saying we need a silver bullet so we don't rely on, you know, monsters taking off, taking out gods or something something like that line that was used so within that film they set up and with a dream sequence that threw everybody you know it did throw everybody i was like whoa and and i've talked about this before maybe they should have just had a, a wee flash sort of running by just so you know or can, can see that it's flash taking them into a vision of the future and not like a dream sequence because some people complained about there were too many dream sequences but I stand forward that we needed a dream sequence because it's what's going on in their heads and that's the one thing missing in comic book movies is the thought bubbles we need the thought bubbles because it's alright Superman coming down and, and it's facial expressions and saying things um, but we really need what, what, what differs from a book to a movie is what they're thinking and unless you're having somebody to narrate or having to get the actor to voice what he's thinking about you know it's so I thought doing it that you know 
So that's what the dream sequence was all about. The state of Bruce Wayne's mind. Uh, and you got that in Man of Steel as well when they went into um, Clark's and Zod's mind thing computer when he's standing in front of the skulls. It furthers on the story. It explains it in a nutshell. Ex you know, and so these... And then we believe that Justice League will probably, there's hints of what's to come that will explain the dream, dream sequence. But again, it's one of these films that to have that in the film, to throw people off, to get them to question and uh, what was that dream sequence about? Did we need that dream sequence? Did we need, um, did we need the thing from Africa in it? Um, with the bullet and stuff like that and for me uh, again yes of course I love every character being in the film you know I don't want to watch it I love the fact we've seen Lois Lane in the trailer for Justice League so we know she's in there and I want her to have a kind of impact because she has an impact on Superman but we also need to uncover what Lois Lane is like in a character. We can't just have her coming out like Jimmy Olsen in the original movies. We, we need her to be this intelligent and, and brave woman. So yes, we needed the Africa scene. So for these guys, David Goyer and, and Zack Snyder and Chris Terrell sitting down at a table and, and, and doing this trilogy from Man of Steel, BVS to... Justice League, that is the story. Uh, that's all we need. We don't need uh, standalone movies. We don't need to follow a Marvel one. And I'll, I'll argue with anybody. Just because it's done that certain way doesn't mean. And no, they're not rushing the movies. I've said this umpteen times. For me, they're not rushing it. They are telling a story. And. Um, and instead of having Batman, um, a Batman story, then a Superman, Superman story, then a Wonder Woman story, then Batman v Superman story, no, I would rather get the BVS first, get a general idea of what's going on, and then go to Justice League. You know, there is life is short, and uh, and if you can tell a, a good story, which I believe that was. Studio cut it, damn you! And yeah, and now some of them, Zack Snyder's went on and with Suicide Squad and David Ayer's went on to that and and they're working off of each other. You had Jeff Jeff Johns now, who's been put in charge. Well, he's given a higher role in it, and he's was at a Comic Con thing or whatever it is, Wonder Con, and. You know, and it sounded to me as though he's been given more control and Warner Brothers has faced the facts that it doesn't need to be what they believe people want and very, 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 very dark because of the Christopher Nolan stuff. Now, you could you could see Christopher Nolan sort of ruined it because his films was widely liked. And they thought, well, that's what we want from now on. But it isn't. People change. And fa and because we've had people brainwashed by all these Marvel films, and this is the way we should only see our heroes and nice medals and fighting and uh, aeroplane car parks and stuff like that. That it should, And we should have the lights on and the sun is beaming and it's a lovely, lovely day to, to have a fight. So... You know, it's and then we have a character Batman who fights at night. So that is, he may look daft fighting during the day. Anyway, I'm drifting off the subject. So it's um yeah. So Jeff Johns has come in. He's he's mentioned. You know what? He he wants to make sure that those heartwarming, heart heroics and whatever is. Is played out during all of the films, right? And of course, Clark Bate got on to it and says, "He said that from now on, all these films must have this." No, 
you know, just saying in general, all DC film, this is where DC works the best when they have this in it. He wasn't saying that BVS didn't have it in it. And I sort of put a paragraph in one of my last videos, one of the comments, because I was asking about that, because I only heard about these comments. So, anyway. So, no, I think they're doing a... I think they're doing a fantastic job. I'm sure David Goyer's working on the, on the script for Green Lantern right now. Um, it's 2020 and stuff. And, you know, he can write good. A lot, a lot of writers can write great stuff and then it just falls away. Uh, ben Affleck uh, done that uh, Live By Night. Didn't really get a good write-up. But then again, he, he helped get Argo in. The town up and running so people you know it's it's very hard when you sit down and you watch the film that you make and I, I used to make films when I was younger and it's all right on script but then when you start filming and it, it doesn't pave the way and, and you could be biased because it's your own work and you think it's a masterpiece and then it turns out it, it's not uh, and people are quick to, to judge me well, you do better. So that's my take on it. It's, I know it's not much of an explanation, but um, that's me just reading some of the comments on the Facebook page. And if you want to get a hold of me or, or comment more, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, if you want me to talk more about this subject, or maybe there's something I haven't said, let me know below. And uh, I'll do a, a video about it. Uh, don't contact the page, the Facebook page. Um, con just leave a comment on the videos down below. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks very much. Be positive out there. It's a great year to be a DC fan.